Oh, snap, snap, snap. The world is finally waking up to the crap that's baked into and sprayed on kibble dog food. No longer can commercial pet food manufacturers fool us with pretty pictures and false promises. This is the raw dog food truth. The view and opinions expressed on this podcast are not intended to replace medical advice. Before starting any raw diet, do research, ask lots of questions, and consult your vet. Well, hello, raw feeders. I'm Dee Dee Mercer Moffat, CEO of a raw dog food and company. I know who I am today. Uh, okay. Where your pets, <laughs> where your pet health is our business, and we're friends like my friend Dr. Judy Jasek. Well, she fights every day to keep friends from feeding kibble. Now, don't you, Dr. Jasek? Boom, boom. Even my enemies. Oh. Anybody, I anybody I can, even if I don't like them, they stop feeding kibble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good because it's about the pets because I like all the pets right sometimes people are a little challenging but they you know, are we, challenging. we work with the people because we want to take take care of the pets but I think where I get the most annoyed is when the people I feel are preventing me from providing the best care for their pets because not that like I know everything but I know what I've seen and I know what's a healthy diet and I know that, you know, chemo is poison. And there's a lot of things I know from 35 years of experience. And when I no. know the path that they're going down is not going to be good for their pet. That's hard. That's hard because it's their choice, you know, but then I don't want to work with them. I, I just, I, I, I really don't. I, you know, working with cancer patients is tough because they die, yeah. you know, I mean, all pets die, but you know, we deal with a lot of seriously ill Patients. I mean, I had two new ones in my email the, this morning that their pets just sometimes they just, they crash and burn uh, suddenly or, you know, or they're elderly, you know, sometimes a lot of the, the cancer patients are elderly to begin with, but, you know, you, you try to do the best you can, but, um, you know, it's, it, it's emotionally, it can be emotionally draining. And when you see something that, you know, I just know from my experience with help and people are, you know, resistant to it. I mean, I respect people's choices, but I also, you know, reserve the right to say, bye. I don't want to watch, you know, you poison your pet. So. Well, I, and I, I've, I, I contend Dr. Jasek, um, if everybody would read this book from Dr. Connor Brady, and I get nothing off of promoting his book, but I got to tell you what feeding dogs, holy cow, anybody that is still convinced that um, commercial pet foods have anything in it good for your dog should read this book. Because what you just said is, you know, people think that all of a sudden that their dogs just are ill with cancer. But if you really look at the food that they've been eating and he goes through all of this, not just the toxic crap that's in there, not just the synthetics and the preservatives that, and the sprayed on rancid oils to make the dogs want to eat it, guys. It is the bioavailability of vitamins and minerals. Right. They are not available to your pet. And he goes through what all of these vitamins and minerals are for. And if your dog doesn't get it, um, eventually they are going to crash and burn. He he was talking about in here that there was a, an experiment on on uh, vitamin C, okay? And a human did this experiment. Now, dogs can synthesize their own vitamin C if they're fed the right amino acids and that coming from meat-based products. But... This human decided that they were going to see just how long that they could go without any vitamin C, azorbic acid, okay? And it was five months, five months that this human could go. And then he was crashing and crashing fast. And what they did was they came in with intravenous high doses of vitamin C and, and sort of, you know, brought it back. Does this person do that? That's, that you know, extreme. they're... <laughs> test they do these tests and the horrible thing is how they test all this stuff on beagles and put them in cages yeah. and you know it, deprive them of so much stuff uh but you know what i'm I, I i said this on my podcast yesterday i thought this was going to 
be an uplifting book for me. And actually, it's very depressing. And uh, you and I were talking before the podcast, uh, going into the grocery store, walking through the aisles for the humans and for the pets, reading Dr. Connor Brady's book, understanding how pet food companies become uh, billion dollar companies is so depressing to me because it means that we're eating crap, crap, mm -hmm. crap, and more crap. And but that's how they make money is, is making a food. Like if they were making a good quality food, they wouldn't be able to make that much money. They're making a food that costs them next to nothing to make, spending their money on their creative marketing. And then they just sell a boatload of it. And like you were talking about fresh pet, you know, all these different, you know, different conditions, healthy skin and healthy gut and puppy and adult and senior. And it's like, it, you know, health is not about, you know, all these different, you know, stages or life stages. They, they pretty much need the same nutrition throughout, throughout their life. That's just all a bunch of, of marketing BS. Right. Thank you. I just got a cup of coffee handed to me. I'm so appreciative oh, of that. Isn't that nice? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, yes. I mean, I get that question a lot, Dr. JC. People ask me, you know, what, what do I feed my puppies? What do I feed my senior? What do I feed my cat? And I'm like, look, dogs and cats are meat eaters, which is another thing that he establishes in this book. He's like, you know, they've done test after test after test. Um, and every animal in a high stress situation even does far better, even on those uh, with meat based products, mm -hmm. right? meat, not meat meal. He really talks about meat meal. And he's like, you don't want to be doing that. But he, he says that, um, I lost my thought. He said that, uh, something uh, about uh, even uh oh, yes. He was talking about, you know, this low protein myth, right? The low protein, the dog goes in, supposedly we got kidney problems. He's like, that is such a bunch of bunk. And he said, dogs, even in a very, uh, dire situation, do better on meat, so, right. not low protein. Right. That's what they, so, that's what they need. It's their natural food. It's like, if you're, how are you going to have healthy kidneys if you're not giving them the nutritional building blocks to have healthy kidneys? And there's just so much misinformation out there. Like meat is a hundred percent protein. Like, well, all I'm feeding is protein. Don't they need fiber? I mean, I get stuff like that a lot. It's not all protein. I mean, what are your blends? Like 12 to 15% right. protein, you know, with, with, you know, full moisture and, and everything. So it's not all protein and it doesn't help. I know it doesn't help that the conventional vets say the same thing. Well, that's just too, too high in protein and they don't even know how much protein is in it. So you're going to feed them a low protein diet. That's not even species appropriate. That's corn and wheat and soy protein. There's very little meat. They, it's, I think those diets are mostly grain-based, but they put a bunch of fat on them just to make the pets eat them. Otherwise they'd, they'd never even touch the stuff. Right. I mean, it is, it is, it is so bad. It is so bad. And yet, and yet, um, that marketing, that marketing, man, it's beautiful. I was looking at, you know, Fresh Pets marketing and it is beautiful, but look at their ingredient list, guys. Turn that roll over and look at the ingredients. The other thing that I have to question, Dr. Jacek, is how do you have a product in the refrigerator for three months? It lasts three yeah. months, they say, in that without being- Oh, in the refrigerator? Oh, no yeah. kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Real food doesn't last three months in the refrigerator. I'm I'm like, you know, it's in that package. Now, once you yeah. open it, I don't know how long it lasts, but I'm like. But still, that's still an awful long time. So there's right. not much natural, or there's a whole boatload of preservatives in there to, to keep it last. I mean, that's, that's just, that's a big clue right there. You know, and the other thing about these nutrients too, is they're meant to be ingested together. A lot of them, they work because they work synergistically, like, like, well, the fat soluble vitamins, you know, this is why, like, I, like, I add extra fat into Max's food every day, you know, part of it is he's out there burning off a boatload of calories out there running in the snow now, but, 
um, it's the highest source of vitamin D and vitamin K2 and vitamin A. And, and you're not going to find those are those fat soluble vitamins as in as high levels in other parts of the body, but they also work synergistically. They're meant to be ingested together. And so when you do these singular, you know, we've got this much A and this much D and this much, you know, the way they, they list those on the label, if they're not all absorbed the same way, and they're, they're just a bunch of chemicals at that point, they're not, they're not working together. That's, I think a big important thing about whole food that, you know, gets also gets overlooked that these nutrients are meant to be ingested together in their natural form. And that's when they're going to have the most benefit. Otherwise you're just giving a bunch of synthetics. I, I rarely do I, uh, do I, um, say to people, you know, we need to do any kind of singular nutrient. Like people say, well, should I give more vitamin C? Now, you know, if you're using high dose IV vitamin C for cancer therapy, you know, that, that has value, but just like, mm -hmm. you know, people get, well, I'm going to give some vitamin C and you have some vitamin E. And I'm gonna, well, or if, like, well, say they're vitamin D deficient, then I would say, yeah, it's a very important nutrient. I'd rather see it come from the diet, but we have a sick pet and they're deficient, you know, like let's get them on the supplement and work on, you know, correcting the diet and see if we can get that level up. But for the most part, at singular nutrients, you're, you're just giving a bunch of, of chemicals, but people read, well, I heard vitamin E is good. Well, I heard vitamin C is good. You know, it just, I just never recommend those. I, I go with the, the whole food, the algae, the mushrooms, you know, where you're, you're adding nutrition, but it's in the whole food form, you know, feeding fish instead of just fish oils, you know, because they think they get more benefit than they're getting another protein and they're getting the organs and they're getting, you know, a lot of extra nutritional benefit that way. And what he really points out in here is that your water soluble vitamins. Okay. So that's everything except your fat soluble. Okay. A, D, E, and K, right. And your fat soluble. Mm -hmm. But all your B vitamins and the others, you in kibble, it's not even getting into their body because the heat makes it um, yeah. unavailable. The heat destroys it. And then you just, they pee it out. So they're missing all of these incredibly important vitamins. And remember that marketing is such that they will concentrate on one thing right? Like no wheat, no gluten, no this, no that. It's blah, blah, blah. Okay. It's still dry. It's still heated. It's still extruded. It still has to have things sprayed on it. And if you look at the recalls that have come down on the kibble side, mm -hmm. and there are many guys, many, 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 it's all because of some sort of synthetic that's been added back in at the wrong amount, right? So like vitamin D yes. or whatever. And um, so this is dangerous. And I think what he really, really points out, Dr. Jasek, is that kibble is dangerous on all fronts. And you can say this food is says it's gently cooked. If it's in a bag, it's fully cooked. Mm -hmm. Don't be fooled. Okay? Don't be fooled. Pet fooled. If you haven't watched that, watch it. If you haven't read this book, read it. I mean, unless you just don't give a sphincter about your dog. Yeah. Get it, get, get educated, you know, get educated. You hear lots of different things out there, but you got to, you know, educate yourself. And like we say here, we, we recommend these things because we've seen them from, you know, our, our own experience. Um, and that's, what's, that's, what's, um, best for pets. I, I love when, you know, I do get clients that like the light bulb goes on they're like, okay, that's it. I'm done. Um, feeding kibble. And I, I had a couple people, people down here in the South can be really like logical, pragmatic. I, I, it's a, it's a very nice culture, very respectful. Um, I get really, I really like the, not, not necessarily the transplants like us, because they can, you can bring your bad habits from other parts, but the natives, really nice. But anyway, I was talking to this guy, he's like, well, I haven't hunted in a long time, but I know how to do that. Can I just go kill the deer and then use that? And, you know, I was talking about how to put it together. I'm like, yeah, you can use 
that meat? And he says, what about rabbits and squirrels? I'm like, yeah, you could feed those. But he wasn't like grossed out about all that. Like a lot of people would be like, well, there's no way I could just feed a like animal like that to my dog. But that's what they eat. That's what their natural food is. And we're trying to replicate that, making it easier with a product like yours. But you know, that's, that's, that's what they're meant to eat. It's their natural food. That's what they eat in the wild. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just, um, I, I, again, it's sometimes, uh, I don't know. I, how do I say? I've 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 started being uh, in our in our customer service also has started being really upfront, right? So you are very upfront. You have your videos. Here's are we a good match? Because we spend so much time um, trying to educate, and it 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 really is difficult. So we just say, listen, if you haven't done your research, raw is probably not going to be for you right? Uh, you want to be on board and understand how health actually works. Because if you don't understand how health works, then I think that you could be swayed any, any sort of way by great marketing, right? So, you know, for instance, I, I get these questions um, and, you know, somebody sent in this and said, you know, my dog's 16, has leukemia, dementia, and arthritis. Um, and now he does have chronic pancreatitis, so I need to watch his fats. But uh, I'm looking to help his cognition. And it's like, okay, well, first of all, you need to reach out to Dr. Jasek because that's what she does. But when I ask, what are we feeding? Right? What are we feeding? Well, we're doing a, you know, a high-level kibble. No, well, uh, there is no such thing. I, I don't even more on, but, but leukemia, dementia, and arthritis, which we're going to talk about this new injection for arthritis that uh, we need to warn some people about, but um, you know, the, these kind of questions, guys, we, I, 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 nutrition has to come first. Okay. I mean, yes, you, you know, there's some other things that could support that, but if we're giving a food, that they can't get their vitamins and minerals from how long can your dog last before the symptoms start showing up? And remember in this test that they did with this human, he was fine up until five months, right? Because it was sort of like he depleted whatever vitamin C he had in the body and then he crashed. So it's not as if it comes on all of a sudden, it's something that happens over time. And then we're like, whoa, they were fine. Because we get this a lot, Dr. Jasek. Well, they're fine. They've been fine. I've been doing this for years. They're fine. Are they? Yeah. They won't yeah. be fine if they're not eating the food that they were born to eat. And I will say that until the cows come home. They're, they're fine until the cancer diagnosis, right? And just right. Out of the blue, you know, just, oh my gosh, I, my dog was fine. And now it has lymphoma. It doesn't show up overnight. It's, it's building up and that's what's, it's really hard about treating cancer because we're starting very, very far behind the ball, regardless of what type, what's showing up background, you know, we're making up for usually years of poor nutrition, over vaccinating, lots of pharmaceuticals, you know, pets that have just been, you know, you know, run through the conventional veterinary medicine world. I don't see pets that have eaten raw, minimally vaccinated and all the things we talk about, I'm not seeing those as cancer patients. Occasionally I'll see one where I'm like, wow, this must be where I think it really had to have been a big like environmental toxic exposure or something or EMF because they're on a pretty clean routine and I'm surprised, but that's hardly ever, probably less than 1% of the cancer patients I see. So it's not just you know, they're, they're fine until they're not because their bodies do make up for things and can, and try to compensate and you don't see the external signs, but it's, it's affecting them. Absolutely. So I had another question come in, Dr. Jacek. I want to see how you would answer this. Uh, the question is, are the blend products safe to feed as a basic whole meal or will they always need additions? How would you answer that? 
this they're, they're talking about ear blends yeah the blends yeah okay um yeah i hear that a lot too like well, don't they just need like something else I, i'll have people sometimes say well i added a little kibble because it just seemed like they need something else like like why do they need something else like no this is their natural it's their natural food so the way i answer that is they don't need anything else now you do want to be doing the proper rotation you know so that because if you just feed one protein you're you're going to be you're limiting the nutrition because each protein has a different nutrient profile so we want to rotate as many different proteins as possible especially getting some fish in there some egg max gets lots of eggs because we have so many more eggs so we know what to do with like max how about some eggs um but i just crack them raw you know into his food but the more variety of different proteins the better i like to add in extra organs because the organs are really really uh nutritious i like to add in a little extra fat but they don't need that other thing that you know that kibble or the fiber or the whatever or the topper or the that's that's in the human brain that that they need that nutritionally they don't need that they're they're perfectly fine with the blends but you do have to do the rotation i i do run into a lot of people that get stuck on maybe just one or two proteins and that's all they feed and i don't think that's healthy but if you're adding in three or four proteins and all this other stuff then Yes, that's pretty much what they need. Well, think about it, guys. I mean, every animal has a different vitamin mineral profile, right? They're not all the same. And I get that a lot. I just want beef. Okay, but your dog needs more than just beef. Okay, there, there's, there's, I seriously doubt, I seriously doubt that there's not two other proteins, whether that's fish, turkey, duck, lamb, rabbit, um, is, is something that your dog won't eat. You've got to get, I I'm going to say at least three in there. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, if you feed just beef for years, that dog is going to develop a sensitivity. It's going to back off the food. It's not going to do well. We've got to have variety, variety, variety. The simplistic way of feeding right, is here at Raw Dog Food and Company. People want to make it difficult. Don't make it difficult. Somebody said to me the other day, I'm totally overwhelmed by all this new information. I said, look, make it real simple. Take out all the processed foods. Um, you know, if you can, remove all the pharmaceuticals. With the caveat, if we've got a dog on a diabetic, you know, insulin, or we've got phenobarbital or things like that, you want to work with Dr. Jasek on weaning that dog off, but stay away from the toxins, feed meat, bones, organ, and fat, and feed a variety. It is super simple. It's super simple. And your products make it so easy. You know, sometimes when I mention a lot of people, they're just like, that their eyes get this big and like, wow, that's like got to be like a lot of work. And I'm like, I'm not talking about you going and shopping for, you know, all these different ingredients because people go on and they look up recipes and stuff. Most recipes that you find um, are crap in my opinion, because they, they almost all have synthetics and they have, you know, too high in carbs and they're not good anyway, but your stuff is, it's fun feed just buy the different proteins. Again, I like to add in a little extra organ, but you got organ only blends. Just do that. Add in a little bit extra. You can, you got the fish and the, and the bones. I just, I just did a big uh, bone order because, you know, Max has neck bones and, and uh, bison patellas and duck heads. The duck heads are a little weird. I, it, <laughs> the eyes. Come on. A little weird. But anyway, Max loves them. So, you yeah. know, he's getting all this, all this stuff, all this, but I know they're really good for him. And, it, but you have all the stuff, like it's one stop shopping. People don't have to go to six different websites. And even if they need a little extra nutritional support, you guys even have like the Phyto Synergy and, you know, some great little supplements like that. So it's, it, it really is easy. It's just different. Different is, is hard. You know, I mean, you just have to get used to it. You know, we just had a, a snow here that was, I guess, a lot for Tennessee, like six inches and it's very cold. So like I had to change, you know, my whole routine. Like I had to make sure I'm out, you know, checking on the chickens more and, you know, um, had to adapt because we got different circumstances. So yeah, change and adapting 
is challenging. But once you get used to it, it just becomes an, your new routine. And then it's easy. And it's so important for your pet's health. I mean, you're literally killing your pet by feeding kibble. And I'm not exaggerating. You literally, because like you're saying, Didi, they're not getting good nutrition and it's toxic. And that's, that's all health is, is proper nutrition, species appropriate nutrition and eliminating toxicity. Boom. You got a healthy dog for 15 years. It's, it's so simple, but why can't we get there? <laughs> why is it so hard to say it to me? It's so simple. Feed a species appropriate diet and stop poisoning them. Boom. Got a healthy dog. You have to be treating cancer or autoimmune disease or any of that stuff. Species appropriate means what the animal was born to eat. And the animal, dogs and cats were not born to eat kibble. Period. Bar none. I don't care how much you pay for it. That's not what they were born to eat. Okay. We're going to say that over and over again. I don't. And the people, it, and the people, you know, putting the, those like, that nice marketing on the bags, they don't know squat about nutrition. They're marketing. They're looking at what words can we put on the bag that's going to make more people buy them, buy this product so that the company we're working for will pay us a million dollars to do that because they're going to make $300 million on this food. That's where all that stuff comes from. You know, people think, oh, it's got these nice pictures and sounds really good and it says it's natural. It's all marketing. It's it's just a big it's just a big mind game. But go with the food that doesn't have all that pretty packaging because it's a company that's putting more money and more emphasis into the quality of the food. Well, meeting people where they are is what Fresh Pet is doing right now. I looked yeah. in there; they had this stuff that looked like steaks. However, it was all plant based for dogs. Now, if you read Dr. Brady's book, your dog getting nothing from plants, from plant-based food, nothing. You don't want to be doing that. And yet, here they are selling it. Well, because mm -hmm. why? Because there are a lot of vegans in the world. There are a lot of human vegans. And there's a you know push out there, obviously, to feed a, a dog vegan food and a cat vegan food. And they may do fine for a while. But if you really look into the science and you really look into how nutrition and how vitamins and minerals and what vitamins and minerals are in plants versus animal proteins, you will not feed your dog or cat a vegan food. Yeah. And now, how and how they get those nutrients out of the food, because your herbivores like cows and horses that eat plants. Well, they all have part of their digestive tract is a big fermentation vat. It's actually hard for the digestive system to break down those, those plant cell walls. That's why sometimes like, you know, if I eat a lot of like raw veggies or something, you know, I might get a little tummy ache or you get a little gassy because your body isn't breaking it down well. Well, the herbivores, they have these big, like the cow has the rumen and the horse, it's the cecum, it's the bacteria in there that's breaking down the um, the plants. Dogs, they've got rapid transit, man, that their stuff goes through their digestive tract fast. So they need foods that can be broken down and assimilated very easily. They're not designed to break down plant cell walls. They're designed to extract nutrients from animal products really fast. You know, that's, that's the way they're designed, gulp their food down, digest it fast and, and they're good to go. They're not, you know, what does a cow do? Cow will eat, will graze, sits down, chews its cud. They spend half their time laying down, digesting because they're eating all this plant material and it's takes a lot of energy to, uh, to digest it. But dogs aren't, they're not, they're not set up that way. So they're getting no nutrition from usable nutrition from those plants and, you know, very little from the synthetic nutrients sprayed on the kibble to try to, you know, make up for those deficiencies. And if you look at the recalls that have happened in that, I was just looking in, in Connor Brady's book. Yeah, I mean, there was just a new one. There was just a, a new recall recently. Well, and, you know, right now you've got um, some people talking about Purina. There's some other ones, you know, Taste of the Wild, um, our uh, Royal Canaan, Pure Balance, Merrick, 
instinct still in Chewy's um, organics. I mean, there's, there's different ones that people are saying, right. We've talked about this, that their dogs are having bloody diarrhea and that they're vomiting and that things are happening. Um, Karina is coming out and saying, this is absolutely false. Our products are perfectly safe. Um, and they've said that before when they aren't. Um, and so it's, it's really funny how, how, yeah. you know, that, that and happens. Nothing, and nothing will happen, you know, like no. that, it, there's no repercussions for these companies. I, I doubt they even get fined or anything. They just get a little bad press. And then, you know, after a while people move on to some other news story and then forget about it and then just go back to feeding the same old foods if it was a raw producer oh my goodness you know those are those are the people out there really trying to kill the pets yeah <laughs> yeah so i mean ridiculous. it's just it, it is ridiculous i'll tell you something else that's ridiculous dr jasek is any vet that has the uh, designation as a holistic vet that is pushing a vegan diet for dogs pushing a prescription diet for dogs, pushing a vaccination still is not a holistic vet. No matter what their marketing says, that criteria right there will tell you that that is not the case. And uh, so make sure guys that if it says holistic, that that vet really understands that um, dogs and cats are carnivores. Now, I would I would wonder, Dr. Jasek, because we've got, you know, somebody up here in, in our area who promotes themselves as a holistic vet and they promote a vegan diet. I wonder if they're vegans themselves, this vet. Mm -hmm. They they are. Okay. <laughs> I think you know who I'm talking the, about. The and whole I, the whole staff is too, because I, I I know somebody that used to work there and like pretty much everybody that works there is which you know is fine respect people's choices but don't push it on the pets well there yeah i mean i wonder if i should drop off a book feeding dogs over there <laughs> <laughs> i think be, that's a great idea I think yeah that's a great you, idea. <laughs> i you know but but here's the one thing about this book dr jay you could take any piece of this and it's so documented with so many tests mm -hmm. so many trials um, that you could take that into a vet, especially those that get their, um, you know, hawks all up in a mess over feeding raw and ask them, do they, have they looked into these tests? Have they looked into how a dog really assimilates its vitamins and minerals? Have they really studied that? And uh, maybe that would be helpful. Yeah. I don't if know. They, if they, if they look at it, I, I, I've kind of, I've really lost a lot of hope for the veterinary profession and for vets ever changing. You know, we, we really need a parallel system just like we do in, in human medicine. Cause I just don't know they're going to change. I think they're, I think they've gotten lazy, you know, and it's just too easy to just do what they've been told, follow, follow the orders, go along to get along, you know, just go to the, go to your continuing education meetings and get your latest round of propaganda and indoctrination and programming. And, you know, they make a lot of money doing it, you know, because they make a lot of money, these pharmaceuticals and vaccines and these foods, they make a, a lot of money. And prescription diets, the only thing that's different about them really is it says prescription and the vets sell them so they cost you more money. I mean, there's nothing prescription about them. Look at the ingredients. They're no different than your bag of prina on the grocery store shelf. So, right. you know, it's, it's, it's just a big, it's, it's just a big racket. And I, and I, you know, ha used to hope that more veterinarians would kind of wake up and, and, um, you know, change and maybe do things differently, but I don't know. I, I don't see it happening, honestly. Yeah. Let's uh, talk about this new injection, uh, of course, being made by the pharmaceutical industry, but it's called Librella. Uh, tell us about this new drug. <laughs> we have new drugs coming out all the time. It's so funny when you when you watch TV. I mean, it is literally 70% all pharmaceutical advertising. 
right, of, of some type of drug that's going to fix whatever ails you so that you can eat your McDonald's yeah. every day. Um, and, and, you know, in a lot of other countries, it's illegal to have pharmaceutical ads on the TV that's unique to the United States. And isn't that bizarre? They're like saying, well, here's this new drug. Go ask your doctor about it. Like, isn't the doctor supposed to be instructing you? You're not supposed to go into the doctor and say, hey, can I try this new drug? I saw it on TV. There's only 15 side effects, including death, but I want to give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> right uh i'm willing that's what somebody said to me the other day so um they they asked me a question okay it was on bones and i said look here's the thing uh, dogs dogs were created to eat bones but in everything in life it's risk versus reward what's the risk you know because the question was is my dog going to um crack his teeth uh, eating this bone. And I said, I don't know your dog. I don't know your dog. I don't, I don't, I don't know any of that information. What I can tell you is that uh, bones are hard uh, and dogs gnaw on them. But I said, I would go in and ask my vet of all the thousands of dogs that you've seen, what's the percentage of dogs that have cracked teeth on a bone, on a real bone, not a cooked bone, on a real bone, uh, and then use that uh, to your discretion. Everything has to be what is the risk versus reward, right? And you really need to know what your risks are. And this is what we always look at. Um, I, You and I think differently on all vaccines and all injections, but risk versus reward is what you want to look at, guys, and really understand what your risks are. And I think that those are hidden from you um, on purpose. But um, but that's what I would say about anything. So let's talk about this Librella injection. What the heck is this new one that people are uh, wanting to put in their dogs? You know, I, I started hearing about this a few months, maybe in the last six months or so. So it's supposedly an injection made by Zoetis, which is the veterinary branch of Pfizer. It's an evil, evil company. I mean, just evil. You look at what the information Pfizer hid from the public about the, the COVID shot and the side effects. They knew all the problems. They it, It's all written in their documents. It's a very evil company. So you kind of want to, would want to be careful with products from them to begin with. But anyway, this is supposedly an injection that um, dogs can be given. And they have a, one for cats too. It's called Silencia. Um, but they give them once a month and it's supposed to help with arthritis pain. And this is um, some kind of monoclonal antibody technology. So, and, and I'm always leery uh, when new things come out, even early on in my career, like I never felt good about using products fitting up and out in the real world because they're not well tested. And if they are tested, they're tested on laboratory animals and even sadly, like the dogs, like the beagles that they do testing on. Um, they're, it's not the same. It's not a real world scenario. They're in this sterile, you know, just very, very controlled environment in the lab. So they really have no idea how this is going to affect animals out in the real world. They're using your pets for that test last week. And, and, and so I'm always leery and I'm like, well, we'll just see what, see what happens here and seems to be helping with arthritis pain. Well, last week I worked with a client who whose dog had gotten um, this injection shortly after was diagnosed with elevated kidney values and shortly after that lymphoma. And she said she went online and was on a like a Facebook forum and talking about this, probably on the lymphoma group. Um, and uh, and she said other people were saying the exact same thing. They get the shot, get kidney um, kidney disease. And then it moves into lymphoma. So now, does that prove cause and effect? Well, no. But if you see the same set of circumstances enough enough times, you know, like walks like a duck, walks like quacks like a duck, might be a duck. But the bottom line is don't use new medications. Because a lot of these just get pulled off. You know, they'll get, and the companies don't care. They make so much money pushing them out. And even if they got a recall or a fine, it's a cost of doing business. They they budget it in. They they don't care if these products get get called back because they're making so much money while they are out there. And then they'll come out with some new version and say it's safer and 
and push it out again. So I would not use any medication unless it's been out being used in the real world for at least two years and proven to be safe. And I certainly would not use this one at this point. So I, you know, I'm curious how monoclonal antibodies um, help arthritis. Yeah, I don't, I, I kind of was reading about it on their website and yeah, it doesn't really, it, but I think the thing about it is you're probably just really messing with the immune system. You know, you're, you're, you know, supposedly it's going to reduce inflammation, but with monoclonal antibodies, to me, that suggests that we are probably disrupting normal immune system function and potentially causing inflammation elsewhere, like other organs, like maybe the kidneys. So, I mean, it's just, it's, you know, you read what the drug company says, and it could just all be a bunch of lies, just a, a bunch of made up, the essays had some monoclonal antibodies they wanted to use and formulated it into the, oh, I've got people using them. So let's formulate it into a drug for pets and see if we can sell it there. You know, I mean, that's, that's really what they do. They're, they're not interested in keeping your pet healthy or pain-free. And there's, there's way better ways to, to do that too. If your pet has arthritis, let's, um, you know, reduce inflammation in the body. I can't tell you how many people I, I worked with that have changed from a kibble to a raw diet. And they're like, wow, my dog's like running around like a puppy again. And I thought it was just getting old, but now it's, it's joints aren't inflamed because of the better food. So there's so many things you can do, but people are not being talked to about that. They're being talked to, oh, just come in once a month for this injection. And what a great, you know, moneymaker for the vets, right? They get the mm -hmm. clients have to come in for it, right? So it's another thing they have to come in for, and then they can sell them on a whole bunch of other stuff. Because as long as they got people coming in the door, you know, they can, um, you know, do the upsell on, oh, you know, get your latest lepto vaccine and make sure you're buying your heart guard and, and all that stuff. It's a, it's, it's just gotten so evil. It just, it's, it's, it's actually pretty sickening. I have, a, I have a picture in my head of a dog with many, many needles and injections stuck all over its body. And that represents health. Does that represent health to you guys? I mean, think about it. Visualize you got a dog and let's say you've got a hundred different, you know, injections stuck all over its body. And that is supposed to give them a great, healthy, long life. Seriously? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doesn't make and any sense. No, it makes no sense. And uh, I was watching a video yesterday and it was with the Dr. Bailey's, the Bailey's, uh, Cowan and Kaufman. And, mm. and they were doing a sort of a rebuttal on, on Dale Bigtree, something that, you know, Dale Bigtree had talked about. And it was on germ theory versus uh, terrain theory. And, you know, they were going back. They said, look, we've done all the studies on smallpox. We've done all the studies on chickenpox. We've done all the studies on rabies. We've done all the studies. And, and they were saying that, you know, there's nothing in any of those vaccines that promote health, but there's certainly a lot in there that promote disease, right? Because they're mm -hmm. toxic. And this is one thing that we just can't seem to parse out. Right then. And then if you take that a step thir further, Dr. Jasek, and you look at um, if viruses don't exist, okay, whatever camp you're in, right? But we, we kind of, we look at it and we say, all right, if you cannot prove a virus and you've never been able to take that so-called substance and make a well person sick, you should mm -hmm. be questioning that, right? Where is the evidence? And I heard Dr. Cowan say in 30 or 40 years, so we, we won't be here. I say, will I be here in 30 years? Maybe I'll be here. But um, it, it's like um, he said that whole narrative will shift because there's too many people that are realizing it, that are looking at the real information. And he said the one thing that the, the narr narrative will shift that will show that it is not germs 
that is causing so much disease. It is our terrain. Whether you decide to put a toxic substance in there or not um, will be your decision. But terrain versus germ theory is going to change. That's going to change the entire industry. And he said what they did wrong, where they really screwed up in this whole COVID-19 narrative was that they said it was a virus. And he said, had they not said that, the gig might not have been up. But because they can now prove that a virus has never been isolated, that all the things they've told us is totally false. He said the gig will be up because they used the wrong thing and we can prove it. And I just thought that that was so amazing and so interesting because if you think about it, Dr. Jasek, look at the veterinary industry. Forget the human industry, but look at the veterinary industry. If you say there is no virus, how many of these injections have to go away or oh invalid? Gosh. Are, yeah, are the totally whole, the whole vaccine, the whole vaccine injury or industry goes away. Right, right, and and you guys, billions and billions of dollars are at risk here. So if you don't think that the narrative is going to be uh, amplified and twisted, just watch, just watch. And I think that for me, at least, when when and he and he talked about it in this video too about and I won't talk about it today, but he talked about the cold season, right? He's like, you know, because people want to say, well, what about the colds? He's like, look, it's a, a buildup in the lungs basically uh, throughout the year, and then you know you're starting to get rid of stuff. But yeah, my whole and you're, point in, and you're inside more in the winter time, yeah, and you know you're not getting sun, you're not getting as much exercise, all these built up toxins. You're not doing as much natural detox. So, so I, in wintertime, I try to sit, we have a sauna. I sit in the sauna more because you want to sweat. You want to get all those toxins out. And if your body can't detoxify, then it's going to snot it out or poop it out or throw it up or whatever it needs to do to get rid of it. But those are actually good things. And then what does medicine do? You know, got vomiting. Well, we you know, prescribe an anti-emetic. You got to stop the vomiting or um, um, like it, you got to, you know, congestion. Well, take a, a decongestant, take the antihistamine, got a fever, got to bring the fever down. You don't want to bring a fever down unless it's really super high. Um, and you want to allow that to heat up the body. It heats the, the gels in the body that are in between the cells. And then it actually helps get those, get those toxins out. I think in, in one of uh, Dr. Cowan's video, he talks about um, jello with poison grapes in it. it might've been the same video because I think, I know I watched this video, but anyway, it says, if you got poison grapes in your jello, how do you get it out? You melt the jello and then the grapes fall out, you know? And that's kind of what, what we're talking about. You, you gotta do something. The body knows it needs to do something to get the toxins out. So warming, is part of it, but but medicine is just focused on suppressing all those symptoms. It wants you dependent. My goal is let's get these pets so doggone healthy they don't have to go to the vet unless they get injured or something. But they're just healthy and they're just going to go live their lives. But conventional medicine wants you dependent. Wants you coming in every month for an in, for an injection and certainly every six months for you know get vaccine updates. They don't they don't want you out there just creating a healthy pet because where would they make their money then? They're, the money is in keeping your pet sick. Yeah. Well, we're going to continue to do, you know, our webinars, um, our podcast. We're going to, you know, alert you guys to things that we see. We hope that at some point you might look into germ theory versus terrain theory. And this will take a little bit of research but if you listen to the people that are actually doing the work, right, doing the work, remember this, that the people that are going against a huge narrative are not making any money and not making a whole lot of friends. <laughs> so what right. is what is the motivation? And it, and it comes down to truth seekers, people that really want the truth, mm -hmm. people that are seeing that what we've been doing is not working. And I say that to people all the time. 
if what you're doing isn't working, why are you arguing with me uh, about what I'm doing that is working? You know, I've only been, this is my 24th year, my 24th year um, with raw. Okay. So I, I mean, I have seen a lot and we have a big pool to compare it to. I would always encourage you guys to read Dr. Connor Brady's book. It's a tough one to read. I'm going to tell you right now, but there's so much information in there that will spin your head. Right. And you'll be like, oh my gosh, I have been lied to. Yeah. What's the yeah. truth, Lucy? Yeah. We've been and, lied and, to. Been, been lied to. Yeah. And these truth tellers you know, are literally putting their life on the line. You know, people get murdered for trying to disrupt the uh the uh agenda the the popular narrative and cut into the bottom line of these big corporations they don't like that they don't like people that that speak out and they make examples of some of them yeah yeah so if we come up missing <laughs> not suicidal <laughs> I'm not, yeah i'm not suicidal there we go uh listen guys we are going to be doing the Itchy Pet webinar, we've got a date for you, Dr. Jasek. What is that date? It's the 25th of 25th. January, mm -hmm. the Itchy Pets webinar. This is going to be a free webinar, okay? If you have an itchy pet, get over to this webinar. We will um, get that link out, and then I'll get that up in the next couple of days. We can come and sign up. This will be a free webinar. Tell all of the pet parents that you know right? Whether they're on raw or not, you know, a dog down the street that's itching, your dog's itching, your son's dog's itching, your parents' dog's itching, you know, whatever. They need to come over to the Itchy Pet webinar that's going to be on January the 25th. And uh, Dr. Jacek, I don't know if, if that's going to be um, six o'clock mountain time or six o'clock your time. We'll get that figured out we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out yeah whatever's the best uh for 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 folks but you want to come over to the itchy pet webinar okay now you guys we get a lot of questions during these webinars so we're not going to be able to answer all of them but if you have some questions send them to us at info at raw dog food and company.com info at raw dog food and company.com and uh, raw dog food and co. Sorry, all of the emails are co. Info at raw dog food and co.com. And we'll pick, you know, five or so, Dr. Jasek, that we can answer, sure. uh, may maybe 10. But uh, if you want to get your question answered, you need to get those over to us uh, ASAP. So that is coming up. Remember that the cancer webinar is available on Dr. Jasek's site. That's A H A vet.com. It's also available on my site. Uh, in the learning center. It's also in the supplement section. I think it's really important whether your dog has a cancer diagnosis now or not, it, it, you know, you want to prevent your dog from getting cancer. So it's a great, great webinar. Uh, you want to take a look at that. Also remember that Dr. JC can work with you via Zoom. I don't think that you have to have your hands on a pet all the time. It's great. She does put her hands on pets, but you guys, one thing that I think that we see is that um, if you're in the traditional way of thinking, you can't see things that may be quite obvious to the holistic folks. And that's Dr. Jasek. So um, your first step to really healing your pet is to get a second opinion, uh, advice on food, advice on supplements, advice on treatments. Um, maybe you've gotten a diagnosis that's very frightening. Work with Dr. Jasek and let her take a look at that. And you can do that by Zoom. All you have to do is go over to ahavet.com, ahavet.com. Also remember, she's got a Substack. Dr. Jasek, what's the link to the Substack that people can sign up for to get your information? It is judyjasekdvm.substack.com. Jasek, J-A-S-E-K. Okay, so get over there and sign up for that as well. Get your dog on a species appropriate diet. I mean, get off the premium kibble because it's just crap. I'm sorry, but yeah. that's what it is. It's high price uh, sphincter nope. food. Totally. No good kibble. Great. Get over no to raw dog. Kibble. No good kibble. Get over to raw dog food and company .com where your pet's health is our business. And what, Dr. Jasek? 
But friends, don't let friends or enemies feed kibble. <laughs> Nobody should feed kibble. That's right. Or fix it. Okay. Or fix it. We'll see you soon, everybody. Bye-bye.